For the first time in my entire career, I can say that the iPhone is a genuinely great video camera. This is true because of one feature that Apple barely mentioned in their original keynote for the 15 Pro, the Apple Log. Today I want to explore what it's like shooting Apple Log on the iPhone 15 Pro and I want to answer a few questions. Is it worth the effort to use Apple Log even as a non-professional? What do you need to consider before shooting Apple Log? And where will this be used going forward? Let's start with a simple explanation of what Apple Log is. Apple Log, like any log profile, is simply a way for a camera to gather the most amount of information in the brightest and darkest parts of a scene, so that you have the widest amount of control in post-production. The more immediate benefit, in my opinion, is that the modestly corrected Apple Log video looks so much better than the standard iPhone video does. This is the first time Apple has given back this much control of the video to the end user. Log has always been reserved for video professionals, but now anyone who owns an iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max can learn how to use this. If this is your first time experiencing log video, there are a few ways I think this may be useful. First off, I think this is an amazing tool to start a video archive of the important moments of your life. Apple Log will give you a representation of a given moment at a level of quality that I think will stand the test of time, whereas a standard iPhone video with all its over sharpening and tone mapping decisions may not hold up very well later in life. For example, my son is growing rapidly every month of his life right now. There are so many instances of small moments that I want to remember when I'm older and honestly better yet that I want to show him so he can see what he was like as a kid. Many of us may have wished that there was a large archive of video evidence of what we were like growing up. To have the ability to shoot from a phone this quality of video at a moment's notice with no preparation and no required extra accessories is the best invitation I've seen to document your important life moments. It won't be used for every single video taken on your phone, but if you take the time to go into your settings and turn on ProRes Log, I think it's worth trying out. One major pitfall is that in the stock camera app, Apple Log records only in ProRes, and the file sizes for ProRes are huge. You can get around this by using an external SSD or SD card solution, but that does take away convenience. To get around this issue, I recommend using the free Blackmagic camera app, which allows you to shoot in HEVC H.265 with much more manageable file sizes while still allowing you to shoot in Apple Log. This brings me to my next point. If you are a beginner who is curious about learning to shoot video at a professional level, the iPhone 15 Pro might just be one of the best platforms to do this quickly. The Blackmagic camera app is super simple to navigate and you can play with every setting necessary to get a sense of how each one affects your image. There are professional monitoring tools like false color. You can play around with loading different kinds of LUTs. It's all here. I would have had so much fun playing around with this when I was first starting out. Speaking of fun, do you know what is awesome about a good video sponsor? They don't tell you what to do or say in your video. No talking points, no minimum time lengths. I asked Dbrand what they wanted me to say and they simply said, you do you. So instead of just telling you about Dbrand's leather skins and grip case, I made this. So if you want to thank good sponsors like Dbrand, check out the first link in the video description. While Apple has made it reasonably easy to expose log footage automatically in the stock camera app, I will say that if you care about getting the best results possible, there are a few things to consider. In bright daylight scenarios, you are best off underexposing the iPhone one to two stops. This ensures that you protect your highlights from clipping. When I started working with some of my test shots in Resolve and I applied a color space transform, the benefits of underexposure became quickly apparent. I was honestly really surprised at how rich the iPhone footage can look. If I didn't know that I shot these on a phone, I don't think I'd be able to tell. 
In low light scenarios, expose your subject in such a way that you don't have to bring up your shadows too much because it will introduce noise. This is especially true if you aren't using the One X camera because the ultra wide and telephoto both use slower apertures at f2.2 and f2.8 respectively. I was still impressed with how some of these darker shots came out though because they look better than any phone footage I have ever seen. It's worth noting that the best way to expose Apple Log is by viewing it with a Rec. 709 LUT in the Blackmagic camera app. For those unfamiliar with a Rec. 709 LUT, in this context, put simply, it's a basic filter that allows you to gauge your overall color and exposure. I have left a download of Apple's official Rec. 709 LUT with instructions on how to load this into the Blackmagic camera app in a link below. Now, as good as Apple Log is, it still does not replace a real camera in a lot of situations as much as Apple wants to convince you that it can when they shot their entire MacBook keynote event on the iPhone. Let's go through some of those limitations. First of all, you are limited to the focal lengths on the iPhone, which I found particularly noticeable on the Pro Max because going from a 24 millimeter 1X camera to a 120 millimeter 5X camera is a pretty big jump. There are a lot of focal lengths between those two lenses that I would personally prefer when shooting video. The 15 Pro's telephoto lens works out to 77 millimeters, which I prefer from a usability standpoint. There are ways to alleviate this limitation with external lenses, but that's a topic for a different video. The second limitation is the depth of field. Yes, when you are close to a subject, it's still possible to get a shallow depth of field for a more traditional film look, especially on the telephoto lenses, but this is still a small sensor in a phone. I don't personally count cinematic mode as a true replacement for a large sensor look, and I don't really like how it looks. A feature I hope Apple adds to the stock camera app is a Rec. 709 view assist, just to make shooting Apple Log more accessible to someone who has never done it before. For now, you need to use a secondary app such as Blackmagic Camera and download a Rec. 709 LUT if you want to be certain you are exposing your footage consistently. Personally, I think more people should have an accessible way to shoot log video and color correct it from their iPhone because it looks so much better than Apple's process video, in my opinion. I think you may find Apple log shots in a lot of places where a real camera, even a small one, won't fit. In movies, I can see this being used as a crash cam, a security camera point of view, and even in documentaries where you can't bring a larger camera without drawing a lot of unnecessary attention to yourself. It would be so easy to get great footage in public with the iPhone and no one would bat an eye. It's wild to me that you can get footage that you can blend in with the quality of a real camera from a phone. I've never personally been an iPhone user, but this is a pretty strong case to consider it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video and you want to help me make more videos like this, check out dbrand and consider using any of the links in the description for your next online purchase.